Where's your blood? Wait, let me say that again. Where's your blood? It's a trick. It's a trick question. Because I don't want in your body. I don't want everywhere. <clears throat> I want in your blood vessels. Now, we said hormones travel through the blood and it goes everywhere. But what we meant is your blood goes to all parts of your body, but it is contained within your blood vessels. True? We understand that. Then it's not called blood. Then it's called fluid, tissue fluid is what we call it. We call it interstitial fluid at that point. You're right. Blood does leave and it goes all over, but then it's not blood. So, and we'll explain some other things about it later. Hematopoiesis is blood production. The production of all blood cells is known as hematopoiesis. Poiesis, this may be the first time you're seeing it, means production. Sometimes they simply say hemopoiesis. I will usually say hematopoiesis. Happens in the red bone marrow. And that tells you where the red bone marrow is. All, look here, all blood cell types develop from a bone marrow stem cell. That's different than the stem cells you hear about on the news, okay? These are stem cells just in the bone marrow, so really they only have the potential to become blood cells. Therefore, their actual name is hemocytoblasts. What's blast mean? Producer, builder. What's site? What's hemo? So that means blood cell maker, blood cell producer. That's a cell that will become either a red cell, a white cell, or a platelet. Kind of neat. Depending on the chemicals that are released, it causes it to develop differently. This is the path to becoming a red blood cell. I do not make you memorize all the intermediates, but notice, cell starts out big and amorphous and odd-shaped. It rounds down. It eventually shrinks the nucleus, spits it out, and gets our biconcave shape that we talk about. This in this. The first and the last. Specifically, red blood cell production is called erythropoiesis. I bet you can figure out why. Yeah, it's so obvious I won't even say it. Like I said, you need to know the first cell is called a hemocytoblast. That's a bone marrow stem cell, and it eventually becomes an erythrocyte. But I don't make you know the intermediate name. And this is what the picture looks like. I, I show you this to lock that in. We'll see this similar picture for white cells and platelets. They go through a process of development. And usually we don't learn the names of all the intermediates in here. I'm going to toggle back between 26 and 30 here and actually draw a picture. Do you know what regulates red blood cell level in your body? By chance? Pardon? Okay, bone marrow is where it's produced. Hormones. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. Here's how it works. Red blood cells are all about your oxygen level. When you have low oxygen, it's known as hypoxia. Now, this is cool. 
your kidneys monitor your blood as it passes through there. And there's a part of the kidney that detects low oxygen. And the kidney releases a hormone at its name, erythropoietin. What does erythropoietin stimulate? Erythropoiesis. This hormone targets the bone marrow and causes the bone marrow to increase the number of red blood cells, which can now carry more oxygen. Look, start there, end up here, what kind of feedback? Negative. Feedback. Anybody ever heard of erythropoietin? Or maybe this? EPO? It's a drug. Yeah, exactly. See, if they give you this drug, erythropoietin, is commonly given to people that, well, cancer patients need it because cancer destroys, well, certain types. And when they treat it, they might wipe out your bone marrow. They might wipe out your white blood cells. You need to build that population back up after chemo. So they give you erythropoietin to get that red blood cell count back up to give you energy. Athletes that want extra energy know that if they take that, then it increases their red blood cell count above normal, which gives them more oxygen, which leads to more ATP, more energy, better performance. Hmm. Their blood also gets thicker. And medically they can detect it, and you will lose any awards that you win if they detect that you've been doing that. Do what? Well, they just do a blood test, and they determine your level, and there's certain levels that are normal, and there's certain levels that are above normal that you, a human can't really have. And that's how they do it. Of course there is. Absolutely. And one of those reasons would be because you hang out in the mountains. However, it still doesn't go that high like the guys that are taking the supplement, okay, or the drugs or whatever you want to think about that as. See, when you're in the mountains, there is low oxygen at those levels. This is why every Olympic team trains where? In the mountains somewhere. U.S. Olympic team trains in Colorado Springs. How many people have been there? It's gorgeous, Okay. Countries that are flat and at sea level and have no mountains, they pay other countries to let their athletes go train in their mountains so that everybody's on an equal playing field, so that everybody in the Olympics has naturally high levels from being at altitude. When your red blood cell count goes up above normal, it's called, anybody know? Poly. Cythemia. Oh, it's a protein base. It's not a steroid. What is the opposite of polycythemia? Did you say it? Somebody over there. Somebody. I heard a couple people say it. What did you say? Yes. Anemia. Anemia, we might say. That means without blood. And this means many blood cells. And this means without blood. It doesn't mean you really have no blood. It means low red blood cell count. However, it could mean more than that. And we'll see some slides about it in just a little bit. Notice right here, 
Vitamin B12, very important for red cell formation. How many people knew that? People take B12 shots for what? Energy. You know how the B12 shot gives you energy? It causes you to increase your red blood cell production back up to normal if it was low. That's how it does it. You carry more oxygen, you make more ATP, you have more energy. Well, I'll be. Just works like that. Plus, you gotta have amino acids to build the globin part of hemoglobin. You gotta have iron to build the heme portion. It just kinda all works together. Really neat stuff. Talked about that. Yeah, look, testosterone also enhances erythropoietin, resulting in higher male red blood cell counts. You don't need to know how fast they grow. I'm not, I'm not going to push that on you. I give you enough. Here's the flow chart. You should spend some time looking at this. This is what we already said. Low oxygen hypoxia, kidney monitors that, stimulates the bone marrow with erythropoietin to increase red blood cell production. Now you carry more oxygen. Now it goes back up, negative feedback. Perfect regulator, homeostasis of oxygen levels. Regulated by a hormone produced by what organ? Kidneys. That we didn't even talk about in the last chapter, and now we're talking about it. So it's going to be on the test, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, right here, also folic acid. I focus more on B12, but folic acid, which is one of the B vitamins, which is also necessary to cause the neural tube to close, which prevents spina bifida in developing little babies. Red blood cells live, on average, 105 to 120 days, three to four months-ish. We talked about how they degenerate, and they're really made to be destroyed or break down in the spleen because there are macrophages. What are those? Monocytes that live in the spleen that gobble up red blood cells. Now, by the way, not all macrophages live in the spleen, spleen just the ones I'm talking about now. There's some that live in the liver. There's some that live in the lungs. There's some that live in the skin. They're all over the body in the interstitial spaces just traveling around looking for stuff to eat up. Any idea how many red blood cells are destroyed every minute? Close. Times 100. 100 million red cells are destroyed every minute, approximately. Wow. Yes. Every minute, every minute of your life, about 100 million red blood cells are being destroyed. Why are we not all anemic? Because as Josh just said, we produce 100 million a minute to keep pace to keep it level. That's the way it's supposed to work. Where do you think they go? The liver loves to help out the spleen when the spleen's not there. It just happens they get destroyed all over the body, and macrophages all over the body would help clear it out. The liver would play a huge role in that in that case, though. The kidneys could play a role as well. But the spleen's the, you know, it's the big one. But you can live without a spleen. Some people don't have them. You don't got one? All right. So your liver's in high gear, so stay away from the alcohol. Aren't you glad you asked that question? 
All right, so here's the iron is reused and recycled. And the main thing that iron is used for is to make more hemoglobin. The heme portion is an organic molecule. And it is broken down and converted into something called bilirubin. You ever heard of bilirubin? Do babies sometimes have high bilirubin and it makes them jaundice? And you put them under a little light and it helps with that to break it down. See, the liver uses bilirubin, natural bilirubin, from normal red blood cell destruction to convert it into bile. Oh, that's interesting. There's a little typo right there. It's converted into bile. And what does bile do? Well, let's worry about that later, but I'll just hint at it. It emulsifies fat. It won't be on this test, but that's what it does. It takes lots of fat and separates it into little tiny, teeny droplets so that it's not big pools of fat, in liquid fat in your body. And yes, the, the bilirubin that becomes bile and is in the intestines, it gets broken down and degraded into something else, and that's what gives... That's one of the things that gives feces some of its color. And the globin, which is just protein, gets broken down to its individual amino acids and may be used to make all kinds of proteins in the body. The body is a great recycler. It recycles the iron for more hemoglobin. It recycles the heme and uses it in your digestive tract as bilirubin slash bile. Wow. And then the protein is used to make new proteins in the body. That's amazing. And here's a couple of pictures. I like these two better. That kind of shows some stuff that you can look at. And it see, it gets in there and it shows you what goes where and all that stuff that we just talked about. By the way, what vitamin is necessary for red blood cell formation? B12 is the big one. Vitamin B12. Anemia. I would like for you to read about the homeostatic imbalances, all the anemias, on your own. Okay? I'm not going to talk about all the anemias. There's a lot of them. I'm not going to pound you with them on the test, but I want you to get a good vibe for them and read about them. I will tell you that not all anemias are just a low red cell count. There is a kind of anemia called microcytic. Tell me how that word sounds like, microcytic. Small cell, where a person doesn't make enough hemoglobin in the red cells, so the red cells are tiny. So even though they may have 5 million, if they're small and they don't have as much hemoglobin, they won't carry as much oxygen. So therefore, it's considered an anemia as well. It's a microcytic anemia. 